So tonight, I just want to, um, we want to do some reflection. I call it reflection because the Lord would have shared some of these things with us before. And to those of us who are wondering why we aren't seeing certain manifestation of things that God said to us about us at this time, he wants us to understand some things about that. And what he would have us to understand today, he wants us to keep it before us as we continue to journey through time because it is very important in order to see the things that God said to us about us be manifested in our personal lives, in our lives individually and in our lives collectively as a group. So he's, as always, very specific in the things that he does and says. And so he wants to remind us of some of the things that he spoke to us about and wants us to keep it before us consistently. When God speaks, all of himself is in what he says. I know you would have heard that before, but I wanted to hear it again, and I wanted to understand the depth of what that means, just to think about this. When God speaks, all of himself is in what he says. Nothing that he says is external from his person. And so he, he's taking us this way tonight because he wants us to understand some things about what he told us. Please, I ask for your undivided, 100% attention. And I pray that there will be no distortion in what you're hearing tonight. I pray that you understand clearly everything that he wants to say to us tonight. So I repeat, whenever God speaks, all of himself is in what he says. He is not like men. We say something today and we act differently tomorrow. Not so with God. All of himself is in what he says. And the scripture shows us that in John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the word. We are familiar with that passage. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The word was with God. And the word was God. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. God and his word is the same. So as I told you a while ago, whenever he speaks, all of himself is in what he says. It is not external or apart from him. Also in 1 Samuel verse 3 and 21, the prophet Samuel understood that. In 1 Samuel 3 and verse 21, which says, the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 21. The Lord appeared again in Shiloh, which is a place, for the Lord did what? Revealed himself to whom? Samuel the prophet in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. He revealed himself by the word. Himself by the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He revealed himself by the word. Himself and his word is the same. So whenever God speaks, all of himself is in what he says. I want, to, I want you to always remember that. Whether it is a prophetic word to you, in time of prayer, whatever way he chooses to speak to you, Whenever he speaks, all of himself. And if you understand what that means, all that made God, God is in what God says. And that's why we can trust what he says. 
because it's not outside of his person. So when we understand that all of God is in whatever he says to us, individually or collectively, then we should understand that there's a weight that goes with that, that he does not want us to miss. If we missed it before, he does not want us to miss it again. Also, it's important for us to understand that God is selective. God is selective in what he says generally. What he says to us individually, what he says generally, God is very selective in what he says. So he don't speak loose words. He first thought of what he's about to say, then he speaks it. He's selective in what he says. When he speaks, his heart, will, and desires are revealed. Whenever God speaks, his heart, his will, and his desires are revealed. His desire for you, his, his heart towards you, his heart towards all humankind, his will, his plan, whenever he speaks, it comes out from him. It comes out from him. He is purposeful in what he says and does. Everything God says has a purpose to it. There's a reason for saying it. Whatever he does, there's a reason. So everything he says and everything he does, he is purposeful in saying it and purposeful in doing it. So whenever he tells you something, know that he has a purpose in mind. Whenever he does something for you or through you, there is a reason why. This is how God functions. And this is what he wants us to know. So that we would not take whatever he tells us or would say to us lightly. Because all of himself is in what he says. All of himself is in what he said. So when he created the universe, only what he wanted, he spoke. This is, this is just to show us how God is very specific in, in what he says and purposeful in what he does and says. When he created the universe, only what he wanted, he spoke. All that exists in heaven and on earth is what he spoke into being because that's what he wanted. And everything that you and I can see and things that we aren't able to see with our natural eyes, God was selective. He wanted that. And because he wanted it, he spoke it into being. Everything. And so I'm just giving you a background, and he wants us to have a background of this so that we, don't, we no longer treat lightly what he tells us. He's very specific. We look at Genesis 1, verse 3, verse 6, verse 9, verse 11, verse 14, verse 20. And God said, and God said, and God said. Now we know that the words are the vehicle for the revelation of the, the, the thought and mind. These were things in him, in his being before he breathed them out by speaking. And exactly what he wanted was established because he wanted it. And there's a, there's a reason for the things that he spoke in the earth. By his word. His word. How valuable it is, his word. In Psalms 33 and verse 6, so when you have time, I want you to look at uh, Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 3. Verse 6, verse 9, verse 11, verse 14, and verse 20. We want, to look at Psalm, we want to look at Psalms 33 and verse 6 that helps us to understand the power of this spoken word of God, the value of the weight of it, what it carries. In Psalms 33 and verse 6, it says this, By the word of God, the heavens were made, meaning the planetary bodies, not just the third heaven where God is said to have his throne, but the planetary bodies, all the planets, by the word of God, 
He wanted those planets. We are now discovering the billions of planets that is amazing humanity. These amazing planets, much bigger than the earth, suspended in open space, billions of them. We humankind are amazed, we are still amazed, looking at the billions of these things. And as they go deeper into space, we continue to be amazed. But God wanted that. Therefore, he spoke it into being. The sun itself is a whole planet of fire that nothing can go into without disappearing because of the heat. But it serves its purpose in the universe because God wanted it there. And in his mind, in his creative mind, he knew it, is ne it was needed. And in all of his plan for the whole universe, he positioned the things the way he wanted it to. This is the being we're dealing with, people. <laughs> this is God. This is the creator of the universe that we worship, who made us and gave us the earthly house that we have for the duration of the time that he wants us to be here, to do what is in his mind. By the word of the Lord, Psalms 33, 6, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He spoke them into being because he wanted it. And everything he said existed, came into being because he wanted it. So God is purposeful and very selective in what he says. And that selection of his spoken words are before us today. You turn around, you can't help but see it. This is the selective operation of God. Whatever he wants, he speaks. So whenever he tells us something, know that he is selective about what he said. So the I means something. The if means something. The when means something. All of that means something to God. Yes, he would not have said it. Hebrews 11.3 tells us by faith we understood that the worlds were framed by the word of God and that all the things that exist did not exist by themselves. I'm just paraphrasing. But they exist because he wanted them to be. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Can we just read it? By faith we what? We understand that the Worlds mean all of it were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen physically were not made of things which are visible because it came from God. He wanted it. He spoke it. He said it into being. He wants us to understand the importance of his word. He wants us to take seriously very seriously everything he says because all that he says is full of meaning nothing that he says is meaningless not with God maybe with humankind but not with God with this knowledge in mind with this knowledge in mind he wants us to be more attentive to what he says to us collectively and individually. I want to repeat this again. With this knowledge in mind, he wants us to be more attentive to what he says to us collectively and individually. Our response to what he says shows how much we are interested in what he says. Our response to what he says shows how much we are interested in him and in what he says and how much we value what he says. Our response. Our response sends that message and he sees it and he hears it because he don't just look externally, he look deep within our being and he sees the way we respond to everything he says. And because he knows we don't fully understand that all of himself is in what he says. 
He wants to reiterate that. He wants us to understand that so that we don't take for granted or take lightly whatever he tells us when he speaks to us. If, as he says, and it is, his very person, will, and desire is in what he says, then what he says to us collectively or individually demands our wholehearted, positive response to what he says to us. It puts a demand on us to respond wholeheartedly and positively to whatever he tells us, wholeheartedly and positively. When he speaks, he expects a response that is equivalent to his spoken desire of us or to us. Let me say that again. When he speaks to us, he expects a response that is equivalent to his spoken desire. He speaks his desire. Whenever he speaks, his desires are being heard. His will, what he thinks about certain things, and the power to make it happen. So he's calling for more attention from us. Saints of God, I can say this boldly. We, are not, we don't really pay close attention to God's voice. It is like a cliche to us. To the point that sometimes after meeting, not just here, it become a joke. In the olden days when God was speaking to the people, they didn't have the Bible like we do today. They will prostrate before God. Whenever the voice of God begins to come, people will just lay flat on their faces because of the reverence they give to the almighty God who spoke the universe into being was uttering his voice. And the mere recognition of the voice of God coming to people brought a response of reverence that people would fell to their faces in honor to God. Today, we just take it so lightly as if some natural human being is speaking to us. So we don't pay it much mind. And our response oftentimes is, well, you know, God said that, but yeah, but I would. We don't understand who spoke. We don't yet have the revelation that this very God who spoke the universe into being and everything that we see is the same God talking to us. The same God has not changed. But because we don't have the right view of God as we should, his words to us can be equal to any other person or our peers. And he wants that kind of response to change. That's why he's speaking to us this way tonight. If we really desire a relationship with the Lord, if we truly desire to walk with him, and serve him the way he wants us to, we must pay closer attention to what he says to us. We must. We should. God is wholehearted, detailed, and purposeful in what he says and does. We also must be wholehearted Detail and purposeful in listening and responding accurately. Listening. We must really want to listen. Every part of our being should be always alert whenever God is speaking. I want to hear. Because this is the same being who spoke the world, the universe into being. And he is saying something. All of his person is in what he is saying, therefore I need to listen attentively. Because whenever he speaks, he wants us to know that he expects a response. 
Whenever God speaks, he expects from us a response to what he says. Every time he speaks, he's looking for that. Every time. So he tells us huh, that when we hear his desire for us, individually or collectively, that we must listen carefully for what is required of us. Please hear this again. Now these are some specific instruction he gave to me to relate to you tonight. Because he see the way we respond to his word. Not the way he wants us to. He tells us, I repeat, that when we hear his desires for us individually or collectively, that we must listen carefully for what is required of us. That's where our, our response comes in. Listen carefully after we've heard it. Now listen to what is required. And adhere to what he requires of us. If we do not adhere to what he requires, if, if we do not adhere to his requirements, we will not see the manifestation of his desires in us. Let me say that again. If we do not adhere to his requirements, we will not see the manifestation of his desires in us. If we do not hear. His requirements are the key to the realization of his desires in and through us. This bears repeating. His requirements are the key to the realization of his desire in and through us. That's why it is very important to listen and to pay attention to the requirement. He says that he has made his desire for us clear to us through his word, himself, and his spirit. The application of his requirements releases his desires for us in us. Let me say that again. The application of his requirements releases his desires for us in us. The application which involves our response, our choice. He tells us that we should not blame him for not keeping his word to us if we fail in our responses. Please hear this. He tells us that we should not blame him for not keeping his word to us if we fail in our responses, meaning if we don't have the appropriate response. Because that is linked to the manifestation of the things that he desired, that he spoke of concerning us, both in the scriptures and through the Holy Spirit speaking to us. We want to see the manifestation of those things. But they are linked to us, a response coming from us. This, 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 this is amazing. God wants the whole world to be saved. And we are familiar with this. He wants all of humanity to be saved. That's the will of God. That's the desire of God. He desires that. He wants it to happen. But what has he done? He made the way for it to happen. What way did he make? For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he what? Gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes, whosoever, anybody believes in him shall not 
perish but have everlasting life. He made the way. But always, in order for us to have the manifestation of the provision God has made, there is something required of us. We cannot walk, work for it. He did all the work, but he expects a response. And he tells us what kind of response is required of us. And when we respond based on his requirement, we are ushered into his desires. And his desires now become our way of life. But it is not going to happen automatically. And as we journey through time, we will discover. We would watch some people advancing and others aren't. We will watch the success of others and the defeat of others. When we see these things happening, don't blame God or even blame the devil. We have to ask ourselves, did I respond to God correctly in all that he told me? When we see success and failure in terms of us fulfilling our purpose in God while others are fulfilling theirs and we aren't, we need to ask ourselves, did I respond? Am I responding correctly? To respond correctly is to know what is required. Am I seeking out? Am I trying to find what is required of me? It is personal. It is an individual thing. But he will never leave us in the dark. He brings understanding because he wants us to walk in the light. What a God he is. What a God he is. So, God is a team player. He is. God is a team player. He is the honest and faithful team player. We can always be assured that he will do his part. But we must ensure that we do our part as well. He will always do his part. We can be assured of that. He will never fail in his part. There is a sense of precision that the Lord wants us to have with regard to what he requires when he shares his desires with us. Let me say it again. There is a sense of precision that the Lord wants us to have with regards to what he requires when he shares his desires with us. Very important. Very important. These requirements, when followed, enables us to live God's desire for us. When we follow these requirements, it helps us to live God's desire for us. Because we are responding correctly. Can you imagine the multitude of people just wanting us to, somebody to pray for me that everything, that, that everything would be all right. Just pray for me, it's going to be okay. It don't happen that way. If we would have forfeited the proper response that is required in order to have God's favor come to us, the way he wants it to. We are and always will be involved. He tells us that. And he wants us to know this. Let me say this again for those of you writing. There is a sense of precision that the Lord wants us to have with regard to what he requires when he shares his desires with us. These requirements when followed enables us to live God's desires for us when followed, when followed, when followed. If we fail in our responses to his requirement, we would have failed to see the fulfillment of his spoken desires to us. Saints, you hear this? If we fail in our responses to his Requirement, we would have failed to see the fulfillment of his spoken desires to us. If we fail, if we don't have the right response. 
He wants us not to be merely excited about his desire for us, but to pay close attention to what he requires of us. Oftentimes we hear God say certain things. Wow, we're excited. We are so excited. And that is good. It's not wrong to be excited. But he doesn't want us to merely be excited. As if being excited is all that is required. But find out when the excitement, we can keep the excitement, but let the requirement excite us equally to the excitement we, we, we receive by hearing what his desires are. He wants us to keep that before us. Keep it before us. So for example, for the children of Israel, everything that the Lord required from them were written in the law that he gave to them. It was written. However, the children of Israel spoke as if God did not reveal to them what he required of them. When they spoke to the prophet Malachi, as if they didn't know. But God didn't, re- God didn't say what his requirements are. That was a lie. Because he did. He did. God told them what his requirements are. From the time he made them his people, he did. The law was full of it. We're not going to look at it, but take it down. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. There were some instructions given there. God does not require anything from us apart from what he has given or revealed to us. He does not require anything from us apart from what he has given or revealed to us. So to all the things we heard from God, we have to now begin to reflect, how did I respond or how am I responding? Because we are about to see some changes in the lives of people as time progress, even in the body of Christ. When it begins to happen, understand that praying alone is not going to change it. It is because it did not respond properly. Responding is a huge thing with God. But he tells us what he wants. So the people in Malachi's day, Micah's day, the prophet Micah's day, acted as if they didn't hear what God, they didn't know what God's requirement was. Like they didn't know. This was strange to us. We don't know anything about it. In replying to the, to the inquiry of the people, in Micah chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, we want to look at that, Micah 6, verse 6 to 7, because this is what the people said. And Micah responded. But they were acting as if they didn't know what God really wanted. The truth is, he told them. It was in the law. Moses instructed them. They heard it in the same way God spoke to us. If we were to reflect the many CDs, the many recordings of things that God told us, how did we respond? We have to ask ourselves. God spoke to us individually individually about the destiny, things he wanted to do with us individually. How far have we gotten in what he said? What has kept it back? Is it God? And oftentimes we say, well, I'm waiting for God. And that sounds good. Could it be that he's waiting on you? He's waiting on us. Because he's a team player. So let's look at Micah. Micah chapter 6. Look at verse, verse 6 to 7. Here with the prophet Micah, when the people were asking the prophet Micah responded to them. But hear what they said. Micah 6, verse 6 to 7. With what shall we come before the Lord and bow ourselves before the high God? 
Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves, one year old? Verse 7. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, ten thousands rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? What shall we do? Micah, you're the prophet. What shall we do? So Micah, in, in verse 8, Micah the prophet said to them, He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. God showed you. How? Through the law, through the instructions given by Moses. God spoke it to Moses. Moses stood before the people and taught the people the ways of God. So to say, should we do this or should we? We don't know what to do. We don't know what he required. So the prophet Micah, knowing this, he said, he has shown you what is good. He has shown you what is good, what you should do. And then he goes on to say, and what does the Lord require of you? Does God require things of us? Yes, he does. But he required it, it after he's shown us what we should do. And he showed us it by speaking. His desires. He voiced it. Whether by dreams or vision. Through his servants. It was made clear. But the response was not the type of response that God expected from the people. And so they were in a place of total confusion. We don't know what to do. Should it, uh, rivers, think about it. Rivers of oil. Just think of rivers of oil. Should we give him all of that? The son of my, my, my womb, my firstborn, should I give him? Should I? We don't know. We are lost. God didn't tell us what he required. No, God don't operate like that. He has shown you, oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly? To love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. So he was telling me, in essence, whenever God says something, understand he's expecting a response. But he tells us in that response what he's requiring. And that's a part we have to give that will bring his desires into our lives. If we don't do our part, his part will not be fulfilled in us. Even though he desires it. Even though he spoke about it. Even though he is speaking about it. He wants us to know it would not happen automatically. If you take lightly my word. If you refuse to respond based on my requirement. And you say, God wants us to always respond with the requirement willingly. Not forced. You know, I was amazed. I was looking at the scriptures when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt. And the Lord, see, he's always, <laughs> it's amazing again. And we can see this so clearly, purposefully what he does. He told Moses to tell them to go and borrow or ask for articles of gold and silver and different things from their neighbors. God say that, yeah. Because why would God tell you to ask somebody, go and ask your neighbor for articles of gold and articles of silver? Nah, God don't, God don't do those things. Does he? Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, okay? Let's see. So let's look at, <laughs> let's look at Exodus chapter 11 and verse 2. And I want you to see something. See, because God never requires something from us unless he reveals it. See, Exodus chapter 11 and verse 2. Watch this. Speak now in the hearing of the people. Now let's go up to verse 1. 
verse 1. And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on the Egyptians. After he will let you go from here, when he let you go, he will surely drive you out of here altogether. Now, God's still speaking. Speak now in the hearing of the people and let every man ask from his what? Neighbor what? And every woman from her neighbor, what, 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 what should they ask for? Articles of silver, articles of gold. But, but why God would ask, tell them to ask the neighbors for that? They're getting ready to leave Egypt. They're getting ready to leave, heading out into the wilderness. It's not a parade or a show with some nations in the wilderness. But because God is purposeful in what he does and purposeful in what he says, there was a purpose attached to that that they did not know. But God, because he don't speak loose words, he knows exactly the reason why he said what he said. So they did. There's another passage again found in, in, in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 22. Exodus 3 and verse 22. So I wanted to keep this in mind. God said this. Now just think of God. Get him ready for them to leave. Most of them, they're going to drive you out all together. And now he says, tell everyone, the ladies, neighbor, ask for. So they go to the neighbors. Do you have a gold pot? Do you have a gold plate? Do you have gold spoons there? Do you have silver vessels? They want it to be pure silver. No bronze, no mix, nothing. Pure silver, pure gold. Could you, could you give me? Strange, isn't it? God said it. Strange. Now watch this. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, mainly of her who dwells near her house, Articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, so you shall plant the Egyptian. Now, put them on, the children. Let them adorn themselves with it. So all the chain, all the silver, everything, put it on the clothes, dress them up, put on all the things on them. Was that really the intention of God? He's purposeful. So what is he really after? When they began journeying in the wilderness, they got to a place of the another phase of God's purpose. And that was to erect a tabernacle. So as the journey, further aspects of God's will and mind was made clear to the leader Moses, and he began to relate it to the people. So they got to a point now where God said, now I want you to, you to build a tabernacle. And I want it to be built a certain way. And he reminded him, I wanted to build it exactly the way I told you. So God required from Moses to build it exactly the way he told him, and he told him how to build it. Now the next thing he went on to do, go to the people. And tell them, those who would give it willingly, take from them these things. So, Exodus 35, verse 4 and 5, helps us understand that. So, God already gave it to them. Could you imagine the dress of their sons? They have all these nice things in their houses, silver, uh, whatever the, 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 the article was, whatever it looked like, whatever shape it had. Gold, whatever shape they had, they had these things. They probably thought it was for decoration and just looked nice. But God had a plan for that. There was a reason. He is purposeful in what he says and what he does. So watch this. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, 
This is the thing which the Lord commanded. Yeah, now hear this. This is the thing which the Lord commanded. What did he command? Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart. Now watch this with God. God don't like forcing anybody. This is the very nature of God. In everything that has to do with the purpose of God, he wants people to do it willingly. But God is the one who allowed them to have it. And now the time came for the purpose for which they had those things. But he wanted them to release it willingly. Don't force. He didn't say, well, this is the reason why I allow you to have this. Now bring it on. This is what I wanted it for. He knew before when he told them to get those things. And so they had it on their children and they looked nice and had their place looking nice with it. But it was not for that. So when the time came, God said, so Moses said, this is what the Lord, this is the thing the Lord commanded. Take from among you, the people, an offering to the Lord. Let, let, let's go back to the top. So back to the top. Verse 5. Oh, verse. Spoke to all. Can you see it with me? Of the children of Israel saying, this is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, saying, this is what he's saying, take from among you the people an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord God. What was it? Silver. Brown, blue, purple, scarlet. And so all the things that was needed for the temple is what he asked for. And he said, this is the thing the Lord commanded. Now the point here is this. I'm not saying this to raise our offering. The point here is this. God would not give you anything. God would not require anything of you that he did not give to you. God don't expect anything of us that he did not give to us. And he, he doesn't expect us to follow what he has not revealed to us. Make the temple according to the pattern. So he revealed what the pattern should look like. So that he can build it that way. He took from, or he asked for what he allowed the people to have. Because he knew that they had it. But it was for the purpose he had in mind. So again, it brings us back to what he told us earlier on. God is purposeful in what he says. He don't speak loose words. He's purposeful in what he does. So take this, but my purpose is for that. When you think it's for something else, he has a purpose far greater in mind. Now, the requirement of God always involved willingness. Those whose hearts are willing. God expects a willing, wholehearted response to what he tells us. And the requirement, he makes it clear. So we shouldn't wonder, how should I respond? So when we leave here tonight... And we go to our homes. After we would have left the gathering of everyone else. And we are one on one with God and ourselves. He spoke. What are you going to do? Now we can choose to continue a path that goes nowhere. And bears no fruit. Or bears fruit of total corruption. Or we can choose a path. To align with God by having the proper response that is equivalent to the revelation that he has revealed to us, that he has given to us. That would lead us to a fruitful life in God. We can choose to treat lightly what he says. 
after we understood that he spoke the universe into being and that he was selective in what he said and they all came into being and just as he's speaking to us tonight he is selective in the message that he brings to us and is bringing to us and after the message comes to us and we leave here having heard he's looking at our heart's response that will be the requirement to have what he says to become our life but if we don't respond based on the requirement all we would do we just heard a message we pay our duty we went to church and it was good but you go no further and then there are others who are climbing hills and leaping over hurdles and are sowing sowing on the wind of the spirit and you wonder what has happened I always feel dry and like, well, I don't know where God is. Because your response is not proper. And before a matter of time, everything that seems to be life now is going to decay. And a stench would whelm up. And everything that is of God, that was designed to be God in your space, the improper response blocks that. And in its midst, confusion. Because why? The required response have not been met. And God, who is the, the honest team player, is not allowed to do his part in us because our requirement is not equivalent to the revelation he gave. And something has clogged up the line. And there is no movement in your very person. And so we go around with a religious statement. All I need is some prayers. Just some prayers. Oh, I, 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 if I go to this place, they said if we pray, they put something in some oil, I'll get all my things taken care of. So you're just running around to just get some self-satisfaction. When God has a blueprint of his purpose that he wants to bring into our lives by our response. So for the past few years, and most recently, past two years or more, or less, there has been some detailed instructions, and I know by the Spirit of the Lord, some of you are not following, you're taking God lightly still. Well, I tell you the truth, I am not going to lose sleep in the night. If you still choose to do that, when your feathers begin to be ruffled, I am not going to lose sleep in the night because you would have heard and you understood but you choose not to adhere to. Therefore, you must bear the consequence of your choice. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. My prayer to God, God, do something. All he will do is to reveal to you what he said. And expects individual response. I can hold on to God and pull his hand and make him do even all the authority he has given to me. He has a way of blocking certain things that I can even say. Because he wants us to know this is personal. It's us and God. It's you and God. Your progress in God is you and God. Not anybody else. You see in God Fulfilling his desires in you and me. It is not anybody else. It's you and God. When you leave here, when you're alone, when nobody can see you. The requirements of God is before you. You know what he said. And only his words leads to life. Everything else leads to a downward trend. And it's just a matter of time before it is realized. So God says to us, in my fasting, he said, go tell the people. People, I tell you the truth. 
God has spoken to this house with a depth of understanding that I've not been hearing generally throughout the body, both here and other places. You and I cannot say, we cannot say we don't know what to do. We cannot say we don't know how to respond. How to respond. We cannot say. We just, I mean, we can say it if we want to, but we will not be truthful. Because we have heard. So tonight, he reminds us that he's a team player. This is what his word does. When he talks to us, all of him is in what he says. He shows us it from the scriptures. He is his word. He revealed himself by his word. And he tells us tonight. If you really want to have fellowship with me, if you really want to walk the way I want you to walk, I require from you a response. And I'm watching how, you, how you're responding to my requirement. I'm looking at people who I know by the Spirit of the Lord, by the Spirit of the Lord, should be further advanced. I watched the regression. And I knew, as I've seen for many others, that it was just going to be a matter of time that my very eyes have seen. And I see many walking around blind, running from one place, one house to the next. And I watch them drifting through time, hopelessly. Not because God wanted it to be that way, but because they choose not to respond appropriately. They are those who have missed the will of God completely and just simply existing. What a place to be. All of that was because of response, responses. And finally, when the children of Israel left Egypt, they were supposed to go straight into the promised land. Their inappropriate response caused the majority of the hundreds of thousands to die in the wilderness. Hundreds of thousands. Leaving only, thank you, son. Joshua and who else? Caleb. Could you imagine? Two persons. Out of a million, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people, two persons made it from that generation. Why? Because they did not respond properly to God. They did not respond based on the, the requirement. And what happened? They died. God said, your carcass will fall in this wilderness. And you will not see the land that I promise. But why? God was supposed to have gone there. Yes. They saw miracles and signs and wonders. The power of God was manifested. Yes. But with all of that, God required something. He required a response. That's why when he said to them, you see what I did in Egypt. You saw all that I did. And having seen all of that, you did not believe the requirement was Believe. Faith. You see what, how I fed you in the wilderness every day. Bread from heaven poured upon you. You saw how I caused water to come from a dry rock. Nothing was there. You saw my plague in Egypt. You saw my power. You should know that these people that you consider are so huge. You can't stand against. Ah, ah, Lord, bring us here to die. Ah, Moses, and uh, let's stone them. God said, step aside. Moses said, but God, you step aside. I've heard, I've heard your voice. You spoke in my hearing, and I will give to you exactly what you said. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. Settle and seal. Done. You ain't going anywhere. Because of response. And then, 
When Moses said, that's it, it's over. You ain't going anywhere. They came. Now came on Moses. Moses, okay, we heard, we repent. We repented, so we're ready to go. Uh, too late. When I read that, you, we repent. We were sorry, we're ready to go. It's too late. Too late? It's over. Okay, Moses, we're still going to be, because God said to give it to us. Moses said, God is not with you. They left God's leader. They left the ark. And they presumptuously went. And they were driven away by the enemies. Beaten down. Because God's word stayed. Because the requirement for all that he has done. They did not make it. So tonight. Our individual progress in the purpose of God for our lives are hinged upon how we respond to God. And he told us, and he is telling us, and if we really want to know what is required, he said, whenever I speak my desire, whenever I share my desires with you, listen carefully for the requirement. And adhere to them. Listen carefully. Will you please stand to your feet? Today, this evening, having been on the mountain, as it were, sitting before God for the past few days, Listening how much he's making his, his will and desires known to us clearly. And we are in awe with the, the revelation and awe with the understanding. Wow. My goodness, this is great. Yes, it is great. Because he's unveiling himself through his word. But while he's doing that, he's showing us the requirement, what is required of us. And then calls upon us to have the appropriate response. You're not responding to please any human being. It's you and God. He made you. He set you in the earth. He gave it. He set a purpose before you. There's a design. There's a blueprint for you. You don't, you don't, you don't just try and find your way, make your way. Your way has been made. Like David who understood this. You formed me in my mother's womb. And you fashioned all my days. Even before the days began, they were fashioned by you. That's the God we're dealing with. And with your eyes closed tonight, you must take this seriously. Somebody praying, simply praying for you is not going to solve the problem. What is your heart response? Willingly to God. He wants a willing response to the requirement that is before you. When you leave here tonight, be reminded that you are going to shape your destiny by how you respond to God. And as he said, don't blame me for not fulfilling my word if you did not respond based on my requirement. Father, in Jesus' name, your words will not return to you void, as you said. It will accomplish what you please, and it will prosper in the things to which you have sent it. Tonight, O oh God, in the hearing of these people, your voice has been released. Understanding has been given. Father, I thank you for making the path clear always. You want us to see you, so you open our understanding. Thank you for giving us understanding. Thank you for what you've shared with us. 
Thank you, O oh God, for the beautiful desires in your heart for us individually and collectively. Thank you for sharing them with us. And thank you for equally sharing with us the requirement to see these desires realized in our time in the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for being the wonderful, honest, faithful team player that you are. Thank you that you would always do your part. You will never fail in doing your part. Father, thank you for teaching us our part on this team with you that we can have the realization of your desires becoming our way of life, which is the best way of life. Thank you, Lord, for taking away the myth. Thank you for breaking down the perception of false religion and for the reality of a personal walk that cannot be masked with you and us individually. Thank you, O oh God. And so tonight, Lord, as we coming to the close of this assignment, this annual assignment you've given to us, that we've carried through to the letter what you told us to speak, what you told us to decree over the land, what you told us to pray about, oh God. And Father, I ask of you especially for those persons who are consistent, sacrificial, showed their commitment from the heart to you, taking what you told us seriously. Lord, I ask that you will release a special blessing on those persons. I ask for a reward that is joyous that they will begin to experience it right here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, for those who took it lightly, that they would be rebuked. That they would understand that it's not a work of a man that they signed up, they signed up to, but it's your work. It's you, Father God. It's you we are all dealing with. That as of this night, Whenever you speak again, whenever you give assignment again, that it will be taken with a wholehearted response. Thank you for the seriousness of your mind. Thank you for the seriousness of your actions. Thank you, O oh God. Now when these people go to their homes and they go by themselves, you are still hearing, you are still watching, you're still listening, and you continue to listen. Father, let it be known this night that you have spoken to us. Let it be known this night. Let this night be a mark night for us in this house as we move forward with you. And we will not be like the children of Israel who forfeited their journey. We will make individual and collective Choices to stay in alignment, in agreement, and advance in your cause. And there will be no misunderstanding or misinterpretation of what is required. But that we know, that we know, that we know by the power of your spirit and your glorious voice, O oh God, what your requirements are. So we thank you tonight. We bless your name that heaven has breathed his breath into this house, into the hearing of those who sat to hear and have heard. Holy one, holy one, it is in the record. It is in the record. It is on the record. Thank you, master. Thank you, Master. Blessed be your holy name. And Father, 
I would like to hear from your voice. As of this night, that the response are wonderful to you. That the response are glorious to you. From here on out. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. You are just in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Oh, Lord, our God, ruler of the nations, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let your will continue to be done in the midst of us, in this nation, and throughout the earth, oh God, you alone are God. We declare it, you are the only God, the Holy One who does right. For the judge of all the earth does right. And that's you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Holy One. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's a line drawn in the sand. A call from heaven for a response. A call from His Majesty for an individual response and a collective response. And God hears the heart. God hears the heart. God hears the heart. People, I feel like this place is an acoustic room right now. I feel like the sound of our minds that is not spoken is filling the atmosphere and the ears of God. I feel like the unspoken thoughts of our mind is filling the ears of God as to what we are going to do from this moment on. Filling the ears of God. I beg of you tonight. I beg of you tonight to respond. Please. Please, if you don't, all will see that you did not respond appropriately. The fruit will be clear. And misery will be unavoidable. But that's not the path that God wants. In a world of perplexity, he is the ark of safety and the life of peace and the life of rest. And he never asks of you what you are not able to do. Never will he. Never will he. He will never ask of you anything that is impossible. Never. And as matter of how huge it is, he will supply the strength. As he tells us, you can do all things, we can do all